quite extraordinary game at Hunky Dory's Park with penalties and sendings off in an incident packed game. And nine minutes into the first half, the first of four penalties awarded by referee Graeme Kelly when Joe Gamble, the Limerick captain, was a judge to handle in the area. Declan Fabio O'Brien scored the resultant penalty to put the home side one up. Running the stroke of half time though, Limerick levelled. Shane Tracy got cleared down the right hand side. He whipped in a smashing cross, which was met by the diving Aaron Brown. He powered his header past Gabriel Sava and won one at half time. Just after the restart, another penalty to draw a poor defensive header let in O'Brien. And he was dragged down in the area, and penalty number two was awarded. Goal scorer Brown took exception to the award and was dismissed by referee Kelly. And this time, O'Brien's penalty was saved by Ryan. And then another red, this time for Limerick manager Stuart Taylor. However, now down to ten and with the manager in the stands, the visitors hit the front and again another penalty. Danny Galebraith worked his way into the area before being taken down clumsily by Michael Daly. Shane Tracy stepped up to make it 2-1 to Limerick. Limerick were then reduced to nine men as on 76 minutes the Belgian Axon Bosikita and David Cassidy clashed. He appeared to make a forward motion towards the Trojada midfielder. Contact seemed minimal. But the referee then produced his third red card of the evening. Perhaps it came as no real surprise when Trojada equalised with yet another penalty. Gavin Brennell was bundled over by Gamble as he conceded his second penalty of the night. And O'Brien stepped up for a third time and put the ball down the middle to secure a point for Mick Cook's side. A crazy night on Boyne's side and on us even. Drogheda United 2, Limerick 2. It's, it's one of the ones, you know, where, where um, the player stands his ground, the other one comes up and some players are cute. Uh, some players aren't cute, you know, and, and the ones that aren't cute, you know, um, end up, you know, getting getting uh, left in, 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 in a situation. It was just one of those nights, you know. Maybe it would have been easier to play against 11 men, but um, we, we, didn't, we certainly didn't create enough. It's something that we look at and there'll be lessons to be learned from tonight as well. So many incidents in those three games. We'll be talking about some of them shortly. But first of all, let's look at the table. Shamrock Rovers failing to take full advantage of Sligo's inactivity today. They move to within a point but the bitter red have a game in hand until tomorrow. And what a big match it is. The champions face Dundalk, who have already shown they'll not be easily beaten at Oriel Park this season. Dundalk currently lie third in the table, as you can see. UCD and Shelburne, the sides yet to register a point, and they don't have easy fixtures tomorrow, as you'll see. But first of all, Colm, we need another programme to review all the incidents that were featured in those three matches. But obviously, we're going back to Hunky Dory's Park, and what an eventful evening that was. Plenty of penalties, sendings off, it, it had uh, everything, and goals. Yeah, definitely a, a very busy night uh, for, the, for the referee, but with regards to the penalties, I think he gets, he gets them right. This is the only debatable one. Uh, Gamble definitely makes hand contact with it. Um, You've got to argue whether or not it was deliberate, but he does stop a goal-scoring opportunity. So for me, for me, it's the right decision. Uh, Fabio goes straight down the middle. Uh, it was interesting to see he put, put a few of his... Um, penalties in different areas. This one, he just gets the wrong side of him. He gets put in a bad position and once you get the wrong side, if you put your hand on the player in any way, he's going to go down. Fabio's experience, he, he goes straight to the deck and you know, I think the penalty decision is the right, great save. Um, so, you know, it took an awful lot of uh, uh, bottle for, for Fabio to step up and take the third penalty. Obviously, frustration boiled over into the, into the dugout as well. This was the third one. I think it's difficult to see from the camera angle, but I can't see much ball contact there. For me, it's, it, it's nearly all man, so I think the referee gets that decision right again and Fabio steps up and takes the third one and puts it away. So, busy night for the referee, but for me, the penalty decisions, he, he got all four of them right. Yeah, and uh, there was another incident that we haven't shown there, uh, Bossacoda, who's new to the league and uh, looked good against Cork City the previous week at uh, Thoman Park, but he won't want too much indiscipline creeping into his game because he'll be targeted otherwise, won't he? 
Well, you know, you can't go to a player and put your head into a player whether the player went down easy or not. Well, was there contact here, Johnny, as far as you Well, concerned? I mean, it, it, the intention is there, and that's what the referee <laughs> will say. Yeah. He's, gone up, he, he's walked towards the player. The player's gone down too easy for me. But you can't go and do that. You can't get up and put your head into somebody. And th the problem for Limerick is they don't have a big squad. Stewart has had to assemble a squad very quickly. And, you know, there's not much contact there. And, but you can't put your head in there and he's going to be missing for a couple of matches, maybe two or three matches for that and Limerick are going to miss. Certainly something Stuart Taylor didn't need at this early stage of the season but they have still started pretty well 